Hello, this is HG Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Xeno Gears. Last time, I forgot to equip something on one of my gears. So, let's see. Yeah, we got that new hot rod for Veerge. That'll help her out quite a bit. But actually, I'm going to make another change to my setup here with the power magic. Now, it does weigh a lot, which is why I'm going to lose an agility here. But it's still worthwhile because she's still going to be faster than... Pretty much anything we can run into around here. And she'll be able to one-shot just about anything with her ethers, too. There's actually one enemy around here who does have the HP to be able to survive one of Ellie's ethers, but I very rarely meet up with it, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Let me see what we got there. That was a new circuit or something. Where was it? Ah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, I'm not really concerned about it. Well... Just hold on to it and sell it later. Whatever. By the way, about weight capacity, I generally wouldn't really worry about it too much. Most of the time when that might be a concern. Like, you can equip something that's nearly as good that weighs a lot less. Like, we got the magnetic coats that have 25 response and they weigh 240. But then there's also rest circuits, which have 20 response, but they weigh half as much. So that's a way you can work around that. The other situation that could come up is if I want to equip a lot of really heavy stuff, like three power magics or something. But I usually do that in situations where I'm going to win the battle so quickly anyway that I don't care about the loss of agility. Okay, so we got a new enemy here, Hadamoto something or other. I forget what the maker model of the thing is, but anyway, we got two of those guys, and then we got two of the mechanics behind each of them. So what I want to do is I want to try and use my area of effect spells, but the thing is, is that I can't hit everyone at once. It's kind of like Chrono Trigger, where you have an area of effect there. There are... Ethers that do hit all enemies, but we just don't have them. Alright, good shot there. Now, you might have also noticed when I selected one of those multi-targeting spells, you might have seen where it had like a 68% or whatever the number was there. That's the accuracy of the ether. And if it misses, you'll still deal some amount of damage, but it'll be like a third or a half of what damage would normally be. Ellie would say something like, oh, uh, sorry, I screwed up. Something or other like that. So, yeah, it does seem like an odd thing for Ellie, but as long as you got the power magic, you can one-shot these guys. Hooray! I should probably use an uh, Omega Saw on her, though. We get a Mika! Does it send us on a quest to find Tetrads? No. No, that's another game, viewers. But let's see. Okay, let's go with that. That ought to be good. And by the way, one thing I wanted to clarify about uh, Rico, or more specifically, Steer. Well, first, let's get on this platform to get upstairs. But yeah, I mean, Rico and Steer are still very functional even though I've been bad-mouthing them quite a bit. But they can it can deal pretty good damage. He got a lot of HP, so it's not like Rico is useless. It's just that anything he could do, someone else can probably do better. But anyway, okay, so we got that upper conveyor belt that's going the wrong way. So we got this yellow switch box here. Ha-ha! We can send it in the other direction. Otherwise, you can't really fight against the conveyor belt very well. There's a chest in the lower right there, but we can't reach it with our gears. Whatever shall we do? Well, if you get out of your gears... Ha-ha! Or I could get into a battle with gear-sized enemies while I'm not in my gears. Run! Phew! That, that could have been bad. Those guys can probably one-shot me. Not the mechanics, but the actual gears themselves. But alright, we get another little extra armor. Awesome. 
Okay, let's try this one again. So let's see, we got this little platform here, and you examine the little blue flashy lights there. Boom, we get back up here, and we can move where we want to go. Yeah, that path is blocked off, so we can't go that way. But yeah, you see, if I try to go against the conveyor belt, well, I guess I can go in the opposite direction, but it would take a while. So let's just make life easier. So that's what we're going to need to do to get through the rest of the factory here. We got these conveyor belts. We need to switch them to go in the right direction that we want to go. Okay, let's see. Which one am I looking for? Okay, now you see that yellow switch box there? Do not, do not press that one. Otherwise, there's going to be some enemies that are going to pop out of there. And, well, you'll have to fight them. I don't think you can even run from them either. So instead, if you hit that little blue switch there next to the conveyor belt here, that works to get us through. Hooray! And yeah, now we're above the area where I fought those Hatamotos earlier. You could have kind of seen the conveyor belt from below, but it's a little tricky there. Okay, now, let's see. Well, it's kind of hard to tell, but the conveyor belt going up there, yeah, it's going in the wrong direction. So, let's see. Hit that. Hmm. Well, just take my word for it. It's going in the right direction now. But we do have a save point to use, but before that, let's see. If we hit the... Ah, okay. Well, there's an example of what happens if you miss with one of her ethers there. I was going to edit this battle out, but, well, yeah, I figured I'd show an example of what happens when she screws up like that. Unfortunately, though, I don't have another way of dealing with these guys until I get back to her turn again. But, yeah, usually if I see a whole bunch of mechanics there... I'll want to hit them with an area of effect there. I heard that if you kill all of these mechanics, but one of them, they'll try to try to help hope that you'll use mercy or whatever, and they'll try to heal your gears. But nah, just nuke them all and be done with it. You think ethers are powerful now, viewers? <laughs> Wait until later in the game. But if you press the left switch here, you get two. Two treasures. Ah, ah, ah. Let's see, I think the right switch changes the direction of the conveyor belt there, so no monsters in this one. But yeah, they're always messing with your expectations there. Okay, so now that we're at the last save point here, Let's see, I do want to change my setup just a little bit. Okay, let's see. With Heimdall, I'm going to equip an old circuit to help out his accuracy a little bit. If you didn't equip the power magic yet, this would be the time to do so. And again, I'm not worried about Virge's agility at this point. And yeah, just make sure Ellie has some amount of EP. That'll be pretty useful for us. Yeah, one thing that's kind of strange about Beards is that most Gears, their agility is usually about the same as the pilot. But like with Beards, it has immensely more agility than Ellie does there for some reason. So that's pretty nice. But alright, we got our backup save ready to go. Let's see what lies beyond. It does seem kind of odd that this place has relatively little security so far. I mean, I would think, you know, you're trying to steal the prototype warship of the entire fleet that could devastate an entire city by themselves. I don't know. Call me crazy, but I think I would want to put a little more security around that sort of thing. Wouldn't it have just been easier for us to... 
I don't know, steal a helicopter or some relatively smaller flying vehicle and call it a day? Oh, they actually do have security. We're boss time! This guy is pretty easy, actually. Let's see, with Ellie, I'm not even going to bother with death blows. Just go straight for her ethers with the power magic. Ha-ha! Yeah, even my best death blows will, won't deal that much more damage to this guy. It will deal a little more, but not that much. Plus, she doesn't have to build up her attack levels to get to that point. Whereas, yeah, Veltal and Heimdall, yeah, that's all we got there. Oh, you know, I should use my booster. <laughs> I almost forgot about that. Not that this fight is going to last very long anyway. But, yeah, it's a good idea. This guy does have quite a bit of HP, though. I think he's got, like, what, 6,800 HP? Something like that. If I recall correctly, at some point during the fight, it can summon some of those mechanics we saw earlier. I think they're different ones, but they essentially do the same thing. They will repair damage to, I don't know what this guy's name is, Fizz-6, however you want to pronounce that. But yeah, it does have this little buffing phase it goes into, but I'm not extraordinarily concerned about it. Now for now, even though I could get up to an attack level of 3, I could only use the first death blow at attack level 3, and it's just more efficient to just go up to attack level 2 and use your second death blow. You'll deal better damage per turn than you would if you built it up to level 3 for now, until we get up to, I think it's level 38, if I recall correctly, when we get access to our sixth death blow. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 38, but none of us are here yet. Whoop! No, I don't want to attack the guy. Yeah, one nice thing about using the ethers is that I don't care about him buffing up his defense and whatever the other stats are that I don't care about. Ow! Quit it. Let's see, this guy does have 10% evasion, which is why I equipped the old circuit on Heimdall there. Ellie doesn't need to worry about that at all go nuts with those ethers. And just wait until you see the ethers we get in the relatively near future. <laughs> but yeah, he just can't keep up with our booster. I wouldn't worry about fuel at all during this fight. Or HP. I pretty much almost never worry about HP during boss fights. And even when it might be a concern, I wouldn't use the frame HP 30. I mostly only use that for like grinding death blow, so I can just keep my gear alive while I'm busy working on death blows for other characters. But we've got four of our characters' death blows ready to go. Oh wow! <laughs> I'm surprised we killed it quite that quickly, but. Okay, that works. Yeah, what can happen during this fight is if you don't kill it that quickly, I think what happens is it, like, overheats or something from all the buffing that it's been doing, and, well, you'll kill it shortly thereafter anyway. But we do get a pretty good uh, gear part, ground, which reduces uh, electrical damage, I think it's by 50%, if I recall correctly. We do want to use that in the relatively near future. Elemental resistance accessories are actually fairly decent. Where'd it go? Where's the ground? Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, 50% there. Mika? Yeah, I'm not really concerned about that one. I'd rather just use the ground and be done with it. Generally, elemental resistance accessories are uh, pretty light, too. So, that's pretty nice. All right, so you have this prototype advanced warship 
and you have one giant robot guarding the thing? That's it? Well, that was easy. Totally not going to be a trap. But I thought you knew everything, Sitan. You're the ace of the game. No, of course not. Who, me? <laughs> now you're just talking crazy. <laughs> What's the worst that could possibly happen? I nuke the entire country? Well, you might be able to, based on what we heard about it being able to... Due to Bledovic or something. Oh, yeah. I like this ship! Oh, good, good. So, you know how this works, right? Yeah, let's get it on. Why not? Oh, by the way, I neglected to uh, show it off, but if you go into your menu, you actually don't have Sutan in your party. You have Rico. Attention passengers, we're going to be experiencing some turbulence. But yeah, since Sutan is piloting the thing, he's not in our party right now. Not that it really matters, but it's there. So, do they even have seatbelts on this thing? What do you think this is? Star Trek? Or any number of other sci-fi shows or movies that don't put seatbelts on spaceships? No, they don't have any seatbelts on this thing. But, okay. How do they even... Like, get away without having seatbelts. I mean, I would think if you crash into something, you'd want to have a seatbelt on. I mean, even like driving a car. In the very, very few instances that I've driven a car without a seatbelt, like maybe a minute, I, I felt like I was going to fly out the window at any second. So, yeah, I didn't do that again. Well, if I ever get the blimp I want in real life someday, I will make sure to have seatbelts on the thing. Oh, we're gonna go to Abe? What's going on? What's the worst it could possibly be? What the? How do you always know where we are? Well, I mean, I guess he does work with Kislev, but still. Again? Well, sure, let's take him on in a direct conflict, once and for all. So, I could have equipped Steer if I wanted to. For boss time! But it's not really important. And I think, if I recall correctly, you can even lose this fight and you'll still progress with the plot anyway. But I'll see if I can actually win. Well, we're using it now! Not if I have anything to say about it. But alright, let's see what we can do. Wow, he's fast. I didn't even get my... ATV gauge filled up, or time gauge, whatever. I have no idea what those symbols mean, but it looks cool. So yeah, he can deal damage equal to 50% of your maximum HP. Like your maximum HP, not your current HP, it's not one of those... Yeah, I'm just going to cut your HP in half over and over and over again until you die. Hmm. 
Well, I might not be able to win this one, but I'll see what I can do. Now, since Graf is considered a human-sized character, I can't even use Death Blows against him. You can't do that against any human-sized character. But this also especially counts for Graf. Okay, let's see what you can do. Well, not bad. I think Graf has, like, what, 5,000 HP? So, you might be able to take him down. But I'll see what he can do. Man, you can fight a gear just on foot, just like that one other guy we saw in that flashback. Nice. Come on, Rico. Why isn't he attacking Ellie? Eh, it's probably not important. I wouldn't worry about it. Well, at least he's not using that attack that can... He could have killed Veltal or Steer by now if he kept on using that guided shot or whatever. Ha-ha! Got him! So, yeah, even if you do lose to him... He'll still say the same thing, and the plot will proceed identically anyway. But why lose? I don't like to lose. Can you fly, sucker? Can you fly? <laughs> I like how the gear was just spiraling out of control. As opposed to just, like, going straight left or straight down without doing any bit of animation there. So, it's a nice touch. I like it. <laughs> well, I guess that went exactly as planned. I mean, once we took him out. Oh, yeah, we were kind of hanging on for dear life. What trigger? You point it, you pull the trigger, and somebody dies. It's not that complicated. Usually. He's back! Oh! Okay. Well, it is pretty huge, so I would think we would have a hard time missing the thing. Lock on! Shouldn't we just fire now? It's going to overtake us in a minute. Yeah, sure, if you want to call it that. What's going on? What do you mean? Oh. Yeah, maybe. Oh, well, at least Rico's okay. <laughs> what was that for? Okay. Well, at least we took him out, did we? I guess. But, yeah, we might want to make a backup here anyway. Well, at least we all survived. We put our gears, like, in a hangar or something around here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did kind of notice that. Eh, it's probably not important. I wouldn't worry about it. What do you mean? Hmm. I wonder what that's all about. Well, we survived, so... Let's... What do we do now? Um. Oh. 
well, what do you mean? You mean like the entire game? What do you mean? Nah, that couldn't possibly be true. Although Graf did know where we are. So, yeah, I don't know how that works. Oh, I guess someone is watching us. But who is it? Find out next time on Let's Play Xenogears. This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.